You ever feel like the art of conversation is dying? And if we could let our students have some real honest, kind of like a uh, voice to voice conversations about the things that they're learning about that they might be able to process a little bit better. I've run across a tool that I'm pretty bullish about here at the beginning and want to share it with you and show you how it can help your students to have really great conversations. I'm Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook. Let's get started. Our voice is such a powerful tool that we use pretty much every day. And if you think about it, it's the way that we communicate with each other. It's the way that we've passed along ideas you know, for generations and all, all throughout history. Podcasts are becoming such a force these days. Listenership has continued to grow year after year after year. People listen to podcasts because they still like to hear other people's voices and to learn from other people. It's very personal and it's something that you can listen to while you do something else. And of course, all of this is based off of voice and our voice is at the heart of conversations. And so if it were easier to get our students connected into some real authentic conversations about what they're learning and to be able to dialogue back and forth, wouldn't that be a great way to go? And we know that if we try to have those conversations in class, that sometimes we have the you know one or two or three overpowering voices that kind of shut everybody else out and you also have the students who would just never raise their hand to have a class conversation so how can we help every student's voice to be heard and to help them to learn how to use that that power of conversation well, I've come across a, a new digital tool called synth that I think has a lot of potential for making those voice conversations here's the idea behind synth synth lets you and your students record these audio clips 256 seconds or less and so you can record them on their mobile app you can record them on the web and basically it lets students get their ideas out through voice and you know for for some students it's easier for them to talk their ideas out than to write them out and so what you can do with synths is you you make these little recordings and then with that recording students can either see everybody else's recordings in their feed it's kind of like a facebook feed or a twitter feed of all the people that they follow or you can take those little recordings and group them together as quote unquote podcasts and so we take one big topic and then we can pull all of these little recordings in so that we have what's almost like a little audio conversation. So let's take a look at it here on the screen. So when you get into synth, here's kind of the way that it looks. This is your feed. And so anybody that you follow, all of their recordings can show up in here. You can use the explore tab to find other people's recordings. And then under the podcasts, this is where all of your audio groupings that they call podcasts all go in here. So if you've got a topic and you want to put a bunch of recordings from yourself and from others into that spot, this is where it goes. And then you've got your library where it has all of your own recordings. Now for a while I've suggested Anchor at anchor.fm as a good option for making podcasts with students. And it's got its pros and its cons, but a couple of the drawbacks are that it wasn't made for education. So sometimes students can stumble upon some things that weren't made for students, but also the terms of service say that its users have to be 13 years or older. Since something like Synth has come around, this was created for education. It was created by the parent company of Swivel. They're already in the education space. Plus they've also created some safeguards for students that are age 16 and younger, which is one thing that this definitely has that's better off than Anchor. So let's take a look at a couple of the features that I really like that I think make this a really good fit for the classroom. So one of them is that whenever you record audio, in synth, there's a couple of things that happen immediately that I think are really great. Number one is whenever students record, you can have a transcription done of that audio. So as soon as that transcription is complete, you're able to read along with the words that the person is saying right along with the audio. And so they're, they're kind of synchronized together as you can see here on the screen. And so this is nice for a couple reasons. Number one, students who might have accessibility issues or might have special needs, this could be really great. But what it also does is it makes your audio searchable. And so if you do a simple search using like command F, you're able to look through that entire page and find that that one word. That's one really great thing. In addition to that, whenever students record audio, they're able to leave each other audio comments, but they can also leave text comments too. In fact, you can notice here on this particular one, 
that the thread includes some recordings, but then it also has text comments as well. And it does have support for emojis. Your students will really love that. And so the fact that you can do this with text and with audio, I think is really great. Another thing that's really cool is that you can have your students connect to Synth with an account, but they also don't have to have an account. You know, sometimes having students create an account for every single thing that they do on the web is kind of a pain. And if you want them to just be able to jump right in and add something to a podcast or add comments or whatever, there's this thing called session only participation. Basically what that does is it lets you invite students, or if you're doing this for professional development with teachers and it lets you invite teachers into a podcast and then they're able to listen to it and then they're able to leave audio and leave comments and everything. If you want to get that, get past that whole, let's create an account for every single thing. And if you want students to just jump right in, that's kind of a nice way to go. Another thing that's great is that Synth was built with the idea that students age 16 and under, well, students under 16 would be using it. And so there are extra safeguards for that. And so one of the things that, that they do is they create this participation code. So if students under 16 are going to participate in your podcast, if they're going to record audio, then they've got to have the participation code to be able to join. Plus, if they join Synth, what that means is that they're, they're gonna have a little bit more limited usage on the app. What that means is that they're only gonna be able to access the library and the podcasts. The library is where all of their recordings go. The podcasts are all the podcasts that they're participating in. So the feed and the explore button where they could find other people's stuff just by searching it isn't there. So that, that adds kind of a layer of security there. And the other thing that I really love about this is that all of the synths and the podcasts are embeddable. So if you have a Google site or a Weebly website or someplace where you can use that code, that embed code, all you've got to do is hit the share button and then scroll down and you can get the embed code to embed your podcast into one of those sites. So if you want to be able to share it in different places, that's a really nice way to go. Now, one of the things that Anchor has that Synth doesn't is the ability to publish out to all of these podcast platforms. You can publish to iTunes and to Stitcher and to, to Google Play Music. So you've got the ability to do all of that, but you don't with Synth. And the more that I think about it and the more that I look at it, I realize maybe you don't necessarily need to publish out to all of those to have an effective podcast of sorts for your class. Because what's nice about Synth is that if you start listening to a podcast and you click play and it's going from audio clip to audio clip, it will play them seamlessly in the background. So you can load it up in your browser and you can turn the screen off on your mobile device or you can keep it going on your, your computer or your Chromebook or whatever. And it'll play in the background just like a regular podcast would. So this is another one of those things. I keep saying, you know, I don't think you have to get the app to get the experience. So in this case, you're getting the experience of having podcasts without having to download a bunch of apps and to be able to throw it out to all of these different um, different podcast platforms. So that's kind of a nice feature, I think. So if you're looking for ways to use Synth in the classroom, I think there's lots of options. You know, to have students just talk through whatever it is that they're doing in class kind of as a simple assignment, that totally works. You could have them build kind of throughout the year of their reflections on what they're learning. I could see it as almost like an audio portfolio of their work where they're continuously sharing what it is that they're learning. You could have it almost like a radio call-in show where they're posing questions and then they have other people respond. You could even have um, guests from outside of the class to leave these audio comments so that they're joining in in the, the same conversation with students. So really the sky's the limit with this tool. So if you wanna check out Synth, just go to gosynth.com. Right now, as of the recording of this video, it's available on the App Store for iOS, for your, you know, your iPhone and your iPad and all of that. But it's also available for the web. You can do pretty much anything right on the web, which is great if you've got Chromebooks or laptops or any of those devices. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this. And I will see you on the next video.